Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and I'm going to be talking about the new Supernova Plus Plus Strike Form Sora that just came out today in Global. First things first, this guy looks sick rocking out the Hyper Hammer that was obtained in the Toy Story world from Kingdom Hearts 3. But as always, we are going to talk about the banner, the medal, the draw odds, and finally my thoughts and recommendations on whether or not you should be pulling for this medal. So first things first, with any banner, we always want to look at how long we have it for. We have this banner available until June 19th and that is a lot of time for new things to come out remember that a few days ago we were just talking about supernova plus plus key r23 how it was the only banner out at the time now we've got another banner we actually have two new banners with this and the kingdom hearts 3 lee slash axel who knows what banner we might be getting in a week who knows what avatar boards we could be getting in a week maybe we'll get something amazing in the avatar boards or maybe there'll be this awesome trade sale in the moogle shop so if you're unsure if you want to spend your jewels on strike form sora it's always a safe play to wait until the very last day before deciding if you want to pull in terms of the banner itself it's just standard banner stuff where you spend 3,000 jewels for one pull you're going to be guaranteeing yourself three kingdom hearts three medals that are usually for sub slots or supernova skills that you want to use or they're going to be for draw points for the draw points banner you're going to get one trade medal for strike form sora you're going to get six five star or higher medals which are generally going to be sold for draw points or you're going to be using them as sub slot material you're also going to get 10 vip coins that last all of june so remember that vip coins you get from the strike form sora banner can apply to future medals in case you have extra vip coins or whatnot so they expire at the end of the month just make sure you use them before then You'll also be getting three power gems with every single pull. Again, just icing on the cake. It's a nice little bonus for the fact that you're spending 3,000 jewels, but gems are never the reason you should be pulling. It's just a bonus. It is not something you have to pull for. Finally, you're guaranteeing yourself a copy of Strike Form Sora within five draws. So we're looking at a 15,000 jewel cost just to mercy the metal. And remember, you want to get trades on him. So you'll likely need about 2,000 extra jewels just to make sure he's perfectly traded. So let's go ahead and talk about the metal. So here is Supernova Plus Plus Strike Form Sora. He's going to be an upright power that is tier 10 and a base strength of 47,189. This is about the standard strength for metals that are hitting well nowadays. So if it's not cracking 47,000 strength, it's likely an outdated metal unless it's got some crazy utility to it. So very good that he's got average strength. Unfortunately, it kind of falls off at the multiplier. So with the multiplier, he's got on the low end 15.65 and on the high end 19.89. Neither of these numbers are good. To see that there is a tier 10 with a 15.65 multiplier is really, really bad. When you want to use a metal for damaging purposes but it can be hitting as low as 15.65 on the multiplier that's actually pretty bad it might as well at that point have had a strength of about 40,000 because it's going to be so weak if it hits that 15.65 multiplier not just that but the high end isn't great either at 19.89 we have a lot of metals that at the very least do at least times 20 on the multiplier so for example the key r23 that we talked about the other day that had a multiplier of about 20.8 and that was just flat no matter what it was always going to have that multiplier supernova plus plus xemnas had a multiplier of 20.2 again flat no conditions nothing this guy having a multiplier that ranges from 15.65 all the way up to 19.89 is just not very good it's a wide range meaning that you could be hitting for an extremely low number or a subpar high number so it's just not doing too well in terms of the multiplier in terms of the gauge cost, he has a gauge cost of 4, which is pretty high. You're likely going to need a gauge reduction skill in order to make sure you can activate this metal every single turn and activate it and still being able to recover for all the other special attacks that you're likely going to need to activate. Remember that this multiplier, and we'll get to it again a little bit later, does count plus minus zero. It does not affect count. And usually with those types of abilities, you're going to want extra attack on the metal. So without a gauge reduction skill, if you have extra attack on Strike Form Sora, you're looking at a gauge cost of 8. That's almost as many gauges as an extra attack nominee can restore in one turn on your setup. So you're likely going to need a gauge reduction skill to make this metal work the best. He does 15 hits, which is actually an insanely high number of hits. And it's actually a very big pro for this metal because very rarely do we see metals that crack 15 hits that also give you the buffs that Strike Form Sora does. 
So for example, if we look at my medals, and we just look at medals that do 15 hits. These are all the medals that I have that do 15 hits. And remember that I've been playing this game for over 1,500 days. Having over 15 hits is a very scarce thing that you see nowadays. Not only that, but we'll talk about his buffs in just a second. But looking at ones that increase general strength, nothing. If there's ever a condition that says must do 15 or more hits, you might be struggling quite a bit with buffs because there's very few medals that actually have any sort of great buffs. We have, in terms of ones that decrease defense, SP Xion, which is very hard to obtain nowadays. So it's a very unique ability being able to do 15 hits and still be able to buff. Speaking of the buff, let's go ahead and talk about it now. So. Whenever you activate the special attack, it hits all enemies, and then for one turn, gives you essentially perfect buffs for general, upright, and power. That means whenever you activate Stri Strike Form Sora, he gives himself all the buff that he needs, and then he debuffs enemies all the way that the Strike Form Sora is going to need. So it's perfect self-buffing, and self-buffing is always a very strong thing for a metal to have. It means that every single time you activate it, you don't have to worry about needing to buff it beforehand. It comes inherently with everything that you need. In terms of the base strength buff, he gives all power metals plus 6,000 strength, which is actually pretty good. Remember that in terms of the two turn buffers like Final Fantasy VII Remake Cloud, sure he gives a two turn plus 3,000 buffer, but that means by the second turn, you're only hitting plus 6,000, and that took two turns. With Strike Form Sora, you get that 6,000 right up front. Not only that, but if Strike Form Sora has extra attack, that's plus 12,000 power metal strength in one turn. And that is a beefy, tanky metal right there. So what takes some buffers or metals two turns to reach the strength, it takes Strike Form Sora one turn. And it's always good to get the most utility out of one metal. So pretty good that we have that power metal strength plus 6,000. We'll talk about it again when we actually talk about the supernova attack. Uh, but in terms of his effects, so the multiplier is dependent on how much HP you have. And that's actually generally a good thing. It's very easy to restore your HP every single turn, especially when things like Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A are available from the shop at all times, especially when people have things like Kingdom Hearts 3 Nominate, which fully recover your HP. So that's generally an easy thing to hit. However, it can be very quickly interrupted by enemies that have counterattack that don't knock you out or if you get interrupted so things like the keyblade war remember that gula and envy had an interrupt attack in the middle of your own turn they would just strike you it wouldn't be a strong attack it wouldn't generally be enough to knock you out but it would lower your hp and again with this metal the lower your hp the worse his multiplier gets a tier 10 with 15.65 is almost unacceptable by standards. So having an easy condition like higher HP is good, but remember there are ways that Heartless can stop it. He also gives count plus minus zero, again, making him a great candidate for extra attack, especially with that power strength plus 6,000. Being able to not affect count with those 15 hits is really good. It allows you to get those buffs off. It allows you to make sure that you decrease their defense if they have above zero defense. If they have like plus 15 defense, extra attack, count plus minus zero, really good stuff. It means even if they had a blue counter of like two, you'd still be able to get those buffs off. So that's actually really good. That's count plus minus zero. He has defense boost pierce 30%. Again, it's something we generally see a lot. I've never seen it higher than 30% in terms of any PvP metal. Uh, but remember that it's actually a good thing because it pairs well with the number of hits. So the more hits a metal does, especially when it has defense pierce, it means that many more hits are going to be piercing the defense. So if you take 30% of 15, roughly about four to five hits from Strike Form Sora is going to pierce through the enemy's defense. When we look at metals like Supernova++ Era, which only do one hit and have a 10% break for defense boost, that means all of that damage goes into one hit. If it misses, you're essentially, it's not good. It's not good at all. So having a high number of hits pairs well with defense piercing because that means that many hits are going to be going through the enemy's defense. When we think about something like Dissidious Sephiroth again, that's a 30% break with only three hits. That means on average, only one of those hits is going to go through. And if it doesn't go through, you're likely not going to be winning that match. So it's good to see a high number of hits with defense piercing because that means you're going to get that much damage squeezed out when it comes to PvP. 
Lastly, he does do a next metal conversion, converting the next metal to power. I usually like conversion skills just because it saves you on metals. Remember that next metal conversion means that even if the next metal is magic, even if it's speed, having Strike Form Sora activate before it makes that metal power. So that next metal, if it has some sort of crazy ability you want to use, like Defense Piercing, or it has some sort of crazy buff, it'll become power. It'll gain the base metal strength from Strike Form Sora. It's just really good to have conversion, because that means you're spending less on new metals. So let's just say you bought a broken, super busted magic metal. Let's just say, for example, you got Supernova++ Plus Plus Illustrated Sora, but you're facing a speed enemy. Now, as we know, magic does not do well against speed. However, activating Strike Form Sora before Illustrated Sora will turn Illustrated Sora into power. You're hitting for weakness damage. You're hitting for that times two weakness damage, which is so much better than the times 0.95 multiplier damage that Illustrated Sora was doing originally. So next metal conversion prevents you from needing to buy a whole bunch of new metals just so that you have the attributes right. It converts the attribute for you, and that's always good utility to have. In terms of the supernova attack, there's not really much to talk about. So for one turn, he will give all power metals plus a 10,000 strength, which is always really good. Again, high numbers are good because they reach the damage faster. This is important for things like PvE or things like uh, PV... PvE or PvP, where you want to get to that strength faster. A lot of two-turn buffers only give plus 6,000. When you want to finish something quickly, that plus 10,000 is going to be so much more useful. But the trade-off is that there's no buffing, none whatsoever. He doesn't increase your general strength, doesn't decrease the enemy's general defense, no power speed, magic, no upright reverse, nothing. So it is just straight damage and then that plus 10,000 boost. However, the nice thing is that it does do defense boost pierce 100%. This is great to have on a power metal because there is no such thing as power metal reflection 100%. Likely, this can be a game changer in terms of your PvP setups. If there's a week that has like Fen Rear, Dark Gnaw, and Treasure Trove, you're gonna see Strike Form Sora all over the place because you are guaranteeing that defense piercing with the Supernova attack. It also pairs well with the fact that it triggers before slot 2 instead of slot 1. So this allows you to get all your buffs off. It allows you to activate your Kingdom Hearts 3 nominee first, make sure all your buffs are ready to go, and then BAM! You hit that enemy with 100% defense piercing, which is really, really good. So the Supernova attack, it's a very vanilla because it doesn't give you any buffs, but that plus 10,000 metal strength and defense, boost, uh, defense piercing 100% paired with triggering before slot 2 is pretty good. In terms of the draw odds for this metal, there's absolutely nothing special to report. If you cannot mercy the metal, if you do not have 15,000 jewels to pull for it, don't pull for it. It is not worth it risking only 4 pulls because it's, if I remember the draw odds correctly, it's like 1 every 60 pulls is going to get Strike Form Sora early and it's just not worth it to risk those odds. So what are my thoughts and recommendations on Strike Form Sora? He's a pretty good metal. I actually think he's a pretty decent metal. It can be used for a lot of different content. So in terms of PvE, he's very strong. Like literally in terms of strength, it's plus 10,000 from the Supernova attack. Then it's plus 6,000 from the base strength. If it's extra attack, that's plus 12,000. If you're using a copy metal without extra attack, that's going to be, uh, how much is that? It just reaches really, really high numbers. Like I remember when I did the math, with this metal alone, a copy metal with extra attack, and then two Renova medals, you're hitting 54,000 power metal strength with this guy alone. And that is a ridiculously high number to hit. So he is a big, beefy metal, which can pass a lot of PvE content like Colosseum or really hard quests where you have to complete them within a certain number of turns. Not only that, but again, he self-buffs. I can't stress enough that self-buffing is super good because it can help with things like the Barrier Master. Remember that the Barrier Master, when it gets knocked out, it completely removes all your buffs. And then you don't want to be caught in the middle of your Keyblade rotation trying to hit a super strong enemy and it's like, I don't have any buffs. Being able to self-buff is a really strong ability for any metal to have. And not just that, but the damage condition is actually really easy to meet. High HP, as long as you're healing every single turn, likely this is going to be okay unless, again, you get something with a counterattack or an interrupt that just lowers your HP in the middle of your own turn. In terms of PvP, it's pretty darn good. Defense boost pierce 100% means that that enemy is eating 
all of the damage from a metal that has 47,000 strength. And that is a huge chunk of damage. Anyone who has Supernova++ plus plus Dark Form Riku knows that 100% defense piercing on uh, PvP metal is disgusting. It's also paired well again with that triggering before slot 2 allowing you to buff beforehand. Um, and we already talked about the defense piercing 15 hits. On average you are going to get 4 or 5 of those hits guaranteeing that you're going to get that defense pierce. So it's a really good PvP metal too. Remember that the last good power metal that came before this though was Cloud, and Cloud did have a better multiplier, but even going before that, the metal before this was Leon, Kingdom Hearts 3 Leon, which was meant to be a PvP metal. And then here we are, only three months later, and Leon's been replaced. So this is the next thing I want to say is that with anything that has just high beefy tanky numbers like Strike Form Sora, they get replaced generally pretty quickly. So while I think the metal is great, it is mainly just a damage metal, and damage metals can be replaced very, very quickly. So in terms of raids though, not good for raids. Don't recommend this metal for raids for sure. So who do I think should pull? I think this is really good for people who want to do better in PvP, especially when it comes to the number of hits, that 100% defense piercing. So this is really good for people who want to do better in PvP. It's good for people who need an upright power metal, because even though I kind of bashed on the multiplier and how it's mainly just a damaging metal, it's still a huge damaging metal. It's still really, really good to get that base power metal strength plus 22,000 just from extra attack and the supernova alone. That's still really good. So if you're lacking in the upright power department, if the last thing that you have is like supernova plus Kingdom Hearts 3 Terra, you might want to consider upgrading into Strike Form Sora. But as always, as a metal that isn't essential, that isn't meta to the game, that doesn't have what I foresee as a really long lifespan, always wait until the last day. Just wait until June 19th, see everything that's available. If we get a new Kyrie medal, if we get a new Shion medal, that's likely going to be better than Strike Form Sora, and you don't want to have to spend all your jewels just to realize you don't have enough for the next best thing. So I'd always say wait till the last day, especially with something like this, um, when the medal is not super necessary. Remember that there's not really a lot of content that you're getting jewels from that make you want to spend for this right now we have like the treasure trove challenge we have like raids that are doubled so what would you want to use this metal for if you don't need it if you've been passing stuff fine easy skip not a problem um, and lastly, I always recommend stay, especially with metals that are skippable, stay around 17,000 to 18,000 jewels just in case there's a 5 pole mercy for something that's amazing. Like when Lingering came, Lingering Will came out, I was like, yep, easy spend, for sure. 17,000, not a problem. With Strike Form Sora, eh, it's sort of a problem because if you fall below that and something better comes out, you're going to be like, oh man, I'm out of jewels. You never want to get stuck with no jewels whatsoever. So with that being said, that's my recommendation on Strike Form Sora. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. If you'd like to join my Discord, the link is right down there. I'd be happy to give you some off-hours help in case you have any questions. But as always, until next time, everyone, take it easy.